Who hasn't used one of these spray cans to paint something? Unfortunately, it's not easy to get an even coat of paint on something cylindrical. Stick around and learn how you can print off a really handy painting jig for pipes and tubes. Printable Science presents a 3D printed pipe painting jig. Cans of spray paint are great, and if you're painting a board or something flat, it's fairly easy to get a nice, smooth, professional job. But when it comes to tubes and cylinders, it's a different story. Usually your tube is longer than it is wide, so if you prop it up on its end, it falls over. If you uh, paint it on its side, then you have to wait for that side to dry before rolling it over onto the other. You can drop a string through the middle of it, like with a pencil or something on the end, and hang it from a tree branch or something. But then you've got to make sure you're like out in the middle of a field or something so that that cloud of paint you'll be creating won't drift and leave a cloud of paint uh, wherever it goes. We paint a lot of tubing at Printable Science, so we designed a really handy jig that lets us apply paint really easy with fantastic results. It looks and works kind of like a lathe. It's just two end pieces mounted on a pair of pipes that can be adjusted to accommodate the length of the cylinder you want to paint. This jig was designed so that you can swap out the rails uh, to whatever length you want, so your jig only has to be as long as you need it to be for the pipes and cylinders you need to paint. On one hand, there's a handle so that you can rotate the cylinder in the jig while you apply spray from the can with your other hand. Let me show you how it works. First of all, you just would assemble the jig by putting in the pipes into the stand or into the headstock. Clamp those in place. Slide the tailstock onto the other end. Move that in, getting the pipe that you want to, to paint, and moving the tailstock in until it gets it, then you just clamp it down. Now in practical use, the hard plastic of uh, the ABS or PLA of the cones doesn't form a good friction fit a lot of the time, uh, which often leads to the cone of the headstock spinning in the pipe rather than rotating it. There are three ways you can do something about it. You can print the, the cones themselves in semi-flex. That should be enough uh, for the cone to deform uh, when the uh, tailstock is pressed into the piece uh, that it'll clamp it firmly. Another solution is to uh, dip the cones in Plasti Dip. That's a liquid rubber uh, compound that you can pick up at most box hardware stores. It's a little pricey but it does a great job of putting a coating on uh, the cones that really grabs onto the items you want to paint. So the third option, and probably the most sensible and cost effective one, is to use a blob of this uh, squidgy spongy stuff. I, I think the official name for it is tack. You just take a small uh, ball of that, uh, wrap it on your whatever it is that you're uh, wanting to paint, insert it in the uh, in the jig, and that'll hold it uh, nice and steady. And it'll provide you with all the friction you need to hold the tube you're painting as you rotate it. Once the tailstock is uh, in position, you just tighten it up and then you can rotate the pipe you've uh, just inserted by uh, rotating the handle. And at this point all you have to do is apply the paint. Now there's a number of parts we used in our painting jig, uh, which we printed in PLA with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, two perimeters, 0.2 millimeter layer height, three bottom layers, uh, three top layers, and a 20% infill, except for anything with an exterior thread which needs extra strength. Print those bolts at around 75% infill. If you want things to be a little more robust, you can and actually should use a standard 3 quarter inch by 1 quarter inch long, uh, sorry, 3 quarter inch long, 1 quarter inch diameter bolt and glue on some of the covers that we've supplied. For this task, of course, we're using our uh, handy uh, epoxy workstation. Uh, you'll find that it's great for all your uh, gluing needs and uh, if you're interested uh, you'll just want to uh, 
follow the link up there. We've incorporated EMT pipe in our design. It's cheap and readily available from your big box hardware store, but if you can't get it, you can always 3D print your own rails. We've included STL files for the rails, but you'll need to size the length accordingly. For more details on printing your own EMT pipe, check out the link right here. The jig is composed of two components, a, a headstock and a tailstock, each of which require assembly. They're uh, both the pretty much look pretty much the same, and but it's easy to tell the difference. Uh, the headstock, uh, the ends of uh, two, the two bottom uh, holes are uh, plugged, and uh, on the tailstock, all the holes go straight through. The tailstock is straightforward. You just take the axle, insert it the correct way. It's easy to figure out the correct way because it won't fit in the wrong way. And then take the cone with the recessed thread and screw it on like so. That's your tailstock. The headstock is a little bit more complicated. It has uh, built into it the handle or the crank handle. And so the first thing you want to do is, uh, is uh, make the crank and that involves this piece here and uh, an axle and you slip the axle into the uh, larger hole there it comes through and you take the handle and screw that onto the axle and because it spins freely you're going to find it hard to sort of hold that down while you're tightening it up that's why we've uh, created this uh, custom spanner and you just uh, slip that in and then that will allow you to tighten it up nicely. Then once the handle portion is done, you just take the headstock itself, slip the axle into it, and the protrusion here you can see has some notches in it and they match interior notches on that so you push the uh, handle on until it slips and is snug like that. Then all you do is you take the, uh, you may require a washer as well, uh, which uh, you've printed off, and uh, slip that over the longer bolt, and then tighten it in. And then the final step of assembly for your headstock is the cone that screws in to the other end. So there you have your completed headstock and your completed tailstock, except of course for putting the screws into the pipe channels so that you can fasten it down onto the rails. Voila! You've just made a great little jig that will help you produce perfectly painted pipes and tubes. If you're one of our Patreon supporters, be sure to check out our Patreon page and learn how you can get a hold of files that you can produce uh, this jig with uh, that uh, has different uh, diameter rails and other modifications as well. As a final note, Here's a reminder that the most important thing you can do to ensure proper paint adhesion and finish is to make sure the part you want to paint is squeaky clean and free from all oil and dirt. So just be sure to prepare all your parts before you uncap that spray can. Thanks for watching, and won't you help by becoming an important part of the Printable Science family and make this the channel more valuable and successful? You can help us out by taking the time to watch this video in its entirety and other printable science videos as well, perhaps, aha, while your printer is printing off this project. You can leave comments and questions below. That will help us to continue to create useful videos and 3D STL files that are printer ready and help you to maximize the power and utility of your 3D printer. 
Your feedback is very important. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you have just a moment, won't you show your support by clicking the subscribe button below. Do it. <laughs> if you want to make sure you don't miss our upcoming videos on 3D printing, you'll also want to click on the notify bell as well. And please, consider supporting Printable Science on Patreon using the link supplied below. You can become one of our Patreon supporters for as little as a dollar a month, and it will provide you with lots of extras and additional information, as well as going a long way to defray the cost of making these files and videos. Down below, you'll also find a link to where you can download a copy of the STL files from Thingiverse, so that you can make your own tube and pipe painting jig. As always, you can download a copy of the STL files for this and other projects directly from our website. The latest files and a discussion board on our tube painting jig are available at the printablescience.com website, where all the science that fits, we print.